Previously, we discussed two reactions that we can use to basically create or synthesize our amino acids. So one of these reactions was the Gabriel Malonic ester synthesis or simply the Gabriel synthesis. So in this lecture, we're going to focus on the reaction mechanism of this reaction. Now, generally speaking, the Gabriel synthesis reaction or the Gabriel Malonic ester synthesis allows us a way to transform primary alkyl halides into primary amines. So by using this method, we can essentially synthesize our amino acids. And in this lecture, we're going to discuss how we can synthesize a specific type of amino acid, methionine. So let's begin with the first two reactants. So basically, if we take the bromomalonic ester, this molecule here, so basically on this carbon we have our bromine molecule, so that's why this is the bromomalonic ester. This entire section is our malonic ester. Now, if we mix it with potassium thalamide, we basically create an SN2 reaction. So this acts as a very good nucleophile because it contains two of these pairs of electrons and one of these pairs of electrons will basically approach this carbon from the backside, nucleophilically displacing this good leaving group, our bromide atom, creating this molecule as well as our bromide uh, bromide and ion. So basically this is our tetrahedral molecule where this carbon is attached to four groups. We have this group here, this group here, the H atom, as well as this molecule that has attached itself to this carbon in the first step. Now, notice this H atom attached to our alpha position of this carbon here is very acidic because if we take it off, if we deprotonate it, we place, uh, we form the delocalization of negative charge. We form three resin stabilized form. So in this product, if we take a base such as this alkoxide and use it to deprotonate this alpha H atom, we produce this intermediate which has the delocalization of negative charge among this carbon, among this oxygen, and this oxygen as well. So now if we take this resin stabilized intermediate and mix it with the following molecule, so basically this carbon will act as a nucleophile in the same way that this nitrogen acted as a nucleophile. So this carbon will basically uh, kick off this bromide ion, attack this carbon, these two H atoms will bend down at the same time this bond will break and this entire group will attach itself onto the alpha carbon position. So we basically form the following di-substituted malonic ester that contains these two different groups attached to the alpha carbon of that malonic ester. So we have this group here that contains the sulfur and we have this ring structure here. Now, in the next step, if we mix in some type of base, such as sodium hydroxide in the presence of water, that hydroxide base will attack this carbon position, nucleophilically displacing the pi bond, kicking the pi bond off, placing two electrons onto our oxygen, forming the following tetrahedral intermediate that contains the negative charge on that oxygen. So this oxygen will bear a negative charge. In the next step, the pi bond will reform, but now instead of kicking off this bond, so instead of uh, kicking off this hydroxide group, we basically break this bond here. So when this reforms, what happens is this bond breaks off and those two electrons end up on this nitrogen. And so the nitrogen contains two pairs of electrons and so it bears a negative charge. And we also form this carboxylic acid group. 
Now, because we are under basic conditions, that basically means that this H will be deprotonated and this N will be protonated because we have the water. So in the next step, the water present in the mixture with our hydroxide protonates this nitrogen, we form this intermediate and then the hydroxide deprotonates this H and we form this section here that is our carboxylate ion where this was the carboxylic acid. Now, if we repeat step four, step five, step six, and step seven, with this carbon, the other group on this side, with this carbon and this carbon group, we basically form these two intermediates. So when this, when our hydroxide attacks this carbon and then the pi bond reforms, this bond breaks off, we form this molecule here. And eventually, if our hydroxide also attacks this carbon and this carbon, our ethyl groups are kicked off and we form this molecule here. And then, of course, we have to deprotonate the H's on these two oxygens and we form this intermediate. Immediate. Now, in the next series of steps, we add some type of acid. We can add hydrochloric acid or we can add, for example, hydronium in the presence of water. What this hydronium does is it basically protonates this oxygen, this oxygen, this oxygen, and this oxygen, and we form phthalic acid as well as this intermediate in which we have these two carboxylic acid groups and the two different groups attached to our alpha carbon, this sulfur containing group and our amine. Now in the next step we basically gently heat this molecule so as it rotates we have a decarboxylation reaction taking place. So if the bond rotates and this H approaches this oxygen so it ends up being in close proximity then the pi bond basically grabs this H at the same time breaking the sigma bond the sigma bond creates a pi bond between this carbon and this oxygen and that breaks off this sigma bond and forms a pi bond right over here so we form the CO2 the carbon dioxide and hence it's called the decarboxylation reaction we remove Remove a single H atom along with these two oxygens and we form the following molecule our enol and in the final step or steps we basically have the formation of this carboxylic acid so the enol under these conditions is transformed into the carboxylic acid which is basically our amino acid the alpha amino acid our methionine and notice this is also a primary amine because the nitrogen is attached to only one carbon containing group and that's exactly why the Gabriel synthesis transforms the primary alkyl halides into primary amine. So this is in fact our primary amine. So this is the reaction mechanism for the Gabriel malonic ester synthesis that allows us a method to basically create or synthesize our amino acids.